Hola, mi nombre es Pedin Boyrom. I'm afraid the rest of my presentation will be in English. Um, I'm a consultant dermatologist from Sinclair Dermatology in Melbourne, Australia. And I will be talking to you about sublingual minoxidil, a concept pioneered by my colleague and mentor, Professor Rodney Sinclair. Over the next 10 minutes, I'd like to explain to you why we feel that sublingual minoxidil has its place in the hair loss world. So minoxidil is a, is a piperidine pyrimidine derivative. Um, it was first approved in 1979 for the treatment of severe hypertension. At the doses used for high blood pressure, i.e. 10 to 40 milligrams, um, up to 80% of patients experienced hypertrichosis. And hypertensive patients who were also bald experienced a reversal of their baldness. So based on this serendipitous uh, side effect, uh, minoxidil was repurposed into a lotion and a foam for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. The minimum plasma concentration needed to induce hair growth um, is much lower than that needed to lower blood pressure. So therefore, the minimum dose of oral minoxidil required uh, to induce hair growth is much lower than the minimum oral dose uh, needed to lower blood pressure. So minoxidil itself is a pro-drug. Um, in other words, it is pharmacologically inactive. For minoxidil to exert its effects, it needs to be converted uh, to its active form, minoxidil sulfate, by the sulfur transferase enzymes. Now, when minoxidil is ingested, um, it uh, is uh, largely absorbed through the gastrointestinal tract. It is taken to the liver where it is metabolized by the hepatic sulfur transferase enzyme, salt 2A1 into minoxidil sulfate. That minoxidil sulfate enters the circulation where it lowers blood pressure by opening uh, ATP sensitive potassium channels in vascular smooth muscle cells. Now, the ability to convert minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate varies from person to person because of heterogeneity in the efficiency of salt 2A1. The sulfur transferase enzyme, as well as being present in the liver, is also present in platelets and epidermal and follicular keratinocytes. In the hair follicle, the sulfur transferase enzyme the salt 1A1 isoenzyme is present in the outer root sheath at the level of the keratogenous zone. Importantly, there is no correlation between hepatic salt 2A1 and follicular salt 1A1. So this, uh, this is um, a diagram of the uh, hair follicle and the shaded area represents the keratogenous zone where the salt 1A1 uh, isoenzyme is expressed. So we are all familiar with topical minoxidil. However, uh, there are some challenges with using topical minoxidil for uh, inducing hair growth. The, uh, well, firstly, the maximum concentration of minoxidil, which is stable in solution is 5% which means that using higher concentrations does not usually produce better results. Also, minoxidil is poorly absorbed uh, through the skin. And as we all know, terminal antigen hair bulbs uh, reside in the subcutis. Um, so it is difficult for topical therapies to reach them. The other issue is that there is heterogeneity in the efficiency of the follicular salt 1A1 enzyme. So therefore, patients with low levels of salt 1A1 are poor responders to topical minoxidil. So what about oral minoxidil? Um, well, oral minoxidil in the last few years has emerged as um, a very useful tool for the management of hair loss disorders. However, um, oral minoxidil can also have some challenges. Poor responders to topical minoxidil can respond to oral minoxidil. 
And the reason for this is that oral minoxidil is converted to uh, minoxidil sulfate in the liver, not the hair follicle. And as I previously said, a number of studies now have shown that low-dose oral minoxidil at doses between 0.25 and 5 milligrams um, is effective in androgenetic alopecia as well as other hair loss disorders. So what are the issues with oral minoxidil? Um, well, the first is that minoxidil sulfate is active in the circulation for a maximum of 30 minutes. Also, minoxidil sulfate has a high molecular weight and therefore diffuses poorly from the circulation to the skin. So therefore, the bioavailability of minoxidil sulfate at the level of the hair follicle in patients treated with oral minoxidil is limited. Um, lastly, because of the high levels of circulating uh, minoxidil sulfate in patients who take oral minoxidil, hemodynamic side effects are more likely. So why sublingual minoxidil? Well, sublingual minoxidil is directly absorbed um, into the bloodstream without going through the liver and goes directly to the hair follicle where it is converted to minoxidil sulfate by the uh, salt 1A1 enzyme. So I said before that minoxidil uh, is not pharmacologically active, it is a pro-drug. So therefore, the circulating minoxidil in patients who are treated with sublingual minoxidil uh, does not have the ability to relax a vascular smooth muscle um, and therefore cause the hemodynamic effects. But hypertrichosis can still occur. The other advantage of sublingual minoxidil is that um, in patients who have low levels of salt 1A1, uh, we can use higher doses of sublingual minoxidil to achieve dose-dependent hair growth. So based on this hypothesis, um, a study was conducted in our center involving 40 patients with androgenetic alopecia and they were treated with three different doses of sublingual minoxidil. The outcome measures were global photographic assessments and terminal hair counts at uh, 24 weeks. So as you can see here, um, there was an increase in the terminal hair counts in uh, in the patients treated with sublingual minoxidil at all doses, both in the frontal scalp and, the, and on the vertex. And uh, you can see that the increase uh, was greatest in patients treated with the highest dose of minoxidil, showing that there was a dose dependent response. And this is uh, the uh, before and after photographs. Um, so these are three examples of patients treated with the three different doses. And you can see again on this photograph that the patient uh, treated with the highest dose showed the greatest improvement. Interestingly, uh, no side effects, no significant side effects were observed. So what has been my clinical experience? Uh, I have used uh, sublingual minoxidil um, in the clinic now for a couple of years. Um, and overall, my experience with it has been very positive. The other benefit, in addition to uh, the ability of sublingual minoxidil to, to stimulate hair growth and its reduced uh, propensity uh, to cause side effects of postural hypotension, reflex tachycardia, and edema, is the fact that uh, um, it is suitable for patients who have difficulty swallowing tablets or capsules. Of course, sublingual minoxidil has to be compounded as it is not readily available. Now, I will point out that uh, although hemodynamic uh, side effects are unusual, patients can still experience hypertrichosis.
So this is an example of a patient who was treated in our clinic with sublingual minoxidil. This is a 44 year old woman with female pattern hair loss uh, who was treated for 10 months. Uh, so this is um, a view of her midfrontal scalp, clearly demonstrating an improvement. And this is the vertex, again, showing an increase in density. So I hope that you have found this talk useful and that I have given you food for thought. This is a photograph of our three week old uh, son, uh, Darius. And I'm glad to say that he doesn't need minoxidil. So please feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can see my Twitter and Instagram handles on, on, the, on the slide. And uh, gracias por su atención.